That's not a good sound. Welcome back, friends. Today's video, we're gonna change a couple drum wheel bearings. So stick around, because that's a sound you don't wanna hear. That, that's the sound of money. You wanna know what sound of money is? That's it. Ching, 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 ching. Ching, 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 ching. So your dryer is not making a very good noise. What happens, let me get this door out of my way. And I can feel it just by putting my hand inside this door. I'll show you in a second. Basically this drum has dropped. And it's not riding on the bottom of this door frame. It's riding on the top of the door frame. And I'm gonna show you why this is bad. When we take this cover off, you're gonna see what this does to a dryer. You see that? That's not good. There should be a gap there. It's riding against that. And then you see, as you go around here, there's a gap. Well, basically, this poor drum, metal on metal, folks. So we gotta take it apart. Now, I've had a lot of comments about using an impact. For this, I am. I'm going to speed myself up. I've got four bar head bits or, or screws I got to take out first. And this just speeds up the process. Now, you notice that door didn't fall off like, I don't know if I showed you the other dryer, but on the newer machines, these aren't attached to the doors, to the frames. On the older ones, they attach these to them. So even when you take the two screws out, this door is still attached to the panel. Newer ones aren't that way anymore. Got those two. Now what we got to do is pull out the lint tray. Now down here we have... Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We have 12 5 16 screws. They're not very long, but we got to pull all those out. Then we got to take the lint tray from the top machine out. Because if you remember in my video where I fixed the coin box, there's actually two screws here holding this panel in from the above. So we got to take those 12 out and these two. All right, so now we got those screws out. We got these screws out. The only thing I gotta be careful of is the door switch. There's a couple wires attached to this door. And she should pop off. And I'm gonna show you what is broke. See those wheels there? And that one, the rubber is completely missing from that. That should have rubber around it. Those are those, what I call skateboard wheel looking things. Here's a piece of the rubber right there. That's all that's left. Once they start eating up, they go fast. This thing literally went from not making any noise to making a ton of noise, like overnight. You gotta take care of it before it gets really bad because they will go quick. Once they start, they usually unravel pretty fast. So you might hear a little noise and then the next day it'll be like, oh my God, what happened? You gotta take a 916 socket. I use 3/8 size ratchets. Like I said before on these dryers, you're gonna need some sockets. 5/16, quarter inch, half inch, 7/16, 9/16, and 7/8. That pretty much takes you into all the nuts and bolts that are on this thing. And these don't take much to get off. They're not super tight, they don't come undone. I just back them out all the way, lift the drum up, slide the wheel out, slide the new one in. Now what you will notice is in the video, in that photo you saw the lint in that tray right here. Good time to pull that out right now. 
when you have this cover off, it's probably a good time to go get your shop back and clean out these pockets, clean underneath, clean, don't pull the drum out, because I mean that that's a whole nother job. Because you gotta take the bolt out in the back, plus the belt's gonna come off. Well, like in my video, I said I buy these new ones now that are crimped. Now these, the rubber part finally wore off, but some of these, this is the type where that bearing actually will get hot enough, it'll slide right out. That's why I switched to these. All I do is I just pick up on this thing with my one hand, pull that off, and you see I'm reaching in here, I'm actually getting lint that's packed behind the bearing. I'll show you this. I mean, this is nuts. Look at that. That's all behind this wheel. There's enough of a gap back there, lint and string will get packed in there. And you want to clean all that out while you got a shot, shot at it. And right here is all these rubber pieces. This is all the wheel coming out here. No sense in leaving this garbage in there. So that's real simple, just pick up on the drum, slide her up, make sure she's all the way in. I usually just put this on so I put the nut back on so it doesn't fall off. Pull the other one out. Same thing. Found a quarter. I'm now a millionaire. And then pull that off. And then package the other one. Throw the wrapper on the floor like all the customers do. Put it on. Pick it up. Down we go. Make sure she's in. Put the nuts back on. Make sure she's cleaned up around here and we'll actually just put it back together. Clean up our mess. Now people all ask me, what do these parts cost? What, would the, what did I save by doing this? Well, these wheels I pay about anywhere from the $7 range to $10 and I buy them in packs of 20, so I'm paying seven bucks a piece, 140 bucks for 20 of them. What would Speed Queen charge me? Well, every dealer's different. My dealer likes to rip me off on parts. That's how they make their money. I'm pretty sure that's how my dealer makes their money. And so they would charge me probably 20 bucks, 25 bucks a wheel, and so I never buy them from them. I'm pretty sure they know I'm smart enough not to buy them from them because I've never bought them from them. Uh, certain parts I've learned everything but motors and there's a few other little things but pretty much I buy everything on eBay that I can get and so does every other laundromat owner because your dealers just overcharge. Now you don't want to get the crappiest, you want to get OEM the most you can. Like belts, don't buy chintzy belts, they'll just break really prematurely. You want to find good belts good brand names you trust. So, but that's what those wheels would have cost. Now what would it cost for the dealer to come here and do this? They would have charged me two hours for this and they charge me drive time. I don't know if everybody gets charged drive time, but I do and it's 45 minutes. So we're looking at two hours and 45 minutes. Them charging 60 bucks for a guy to come do this, an hour. I mean, you're looking at what, 150 bucks, 160 bucks, then 20 bucks for the part plus tax. I mean, everything, it seemed like every time I had them work on a machine, it was always $200, $200. Unless it was a big part, like a motor, then it was, well, the motors are six, seven hundred a piece, plus for the big hard mount washers, plus, plus all the tax and labor. So that's why I do it. Now I want to show you something before I get this put all together. I want to show you what this was rubbing into and why this is so bad to let it go very long. You see this part of the drum right here? See how that's not bad? Look at that. That's actually wearing a pretty heavy groove. Now one side's wearing more than the other, probably because of the weight of the drum, because this part weighs more right here, so it's forcing down on the door. And you'll say, well, what is it wearing down on? It's actually 
right here. It's actually rubbing on this. You can see that's all nice and shiny. And down, and I mean, I'll show you this door frame. You'll be like, it really rubbed the hell out of it. Look at the difference between, look at the difference down there and look it up there. I mean, you can almost see the difference in width. And that's because it's rubbing that down just from the weight of that drum. And it'll actually make a sharp edge. It'll catch clothes when it does this. Give you an up close of what this looks like. I mean, that was how thick the rubber wheel was at one time. And you can even see where the drum was riding on it. But most of the time, these old style like this, this bearing actually it gets hot because my dryers get hot and this bearing will actually slide out. And I'll find this thing laying in there. <coughs> now you probably want to ask me, how long do I think this was rubbing? I bet it was rubbing for three or four days. I bet this is just three or four days worth of use. Because one of the things in the laundromat that's going to happen to you, I'll put this on here so I don't drop it on myself. One of the things that's going to happen to you in your laundromat is you're going to go work on your laundromat and you're going to go change out your laundromat and you're going to go home sometimes and you're never going to vend all the machines. Since you never hear all the machines run, you won't know what's broken or not broken. And since this thing was still producing heat, still drying people's clothes, there was no need for them to say, hey, I think you have a problem with this dryer. Now it isn't their job to do that either, but I'm just saying, a lot of times in a laundromat, I'll walk right by a broken machine and not even know it's broken. And the customer may not even know it's broken because for the most part, it's functioning just fine for them. Once in a blue moon, somebody will leave you a note on a machine. Somebody will say something. Um, I know some laundromat owners have tags in their thing and you can write comments on them. I tried that. That didn't work at all. You get a lot of stupid comments and... So what I try to do is, what I do is once a week I go through and I vend every machine. I'll put a quarter in every dryer once a week and I'll listen to it and I'll know pretty quick if it's working or not. I'll also let it go the whole cycle to make sure it got warm and that it's the same temperature basically as the machines next to it. Because if one's cold and obviously the others aren't, well, something's not working. Or if the start button didn't work or that kind of stuff. It's just something you're gonna to have to do if you wanna know if your machines are working or not. You're gonna to wanna to get in a maintenance routine with these machines. You're gonna to wanna to clean your drains every so often on your big hard mounts. You gotta clean them a couple times a month. The horizons, if you buy them, you gotta clean those drains a couple times a month. You gotta check belts. If you wanna just let this stuff run and hope it works, and then when it breaks, you fix it, that's great. But at some point, one of your customers is going to get taken. And that's going, to, that's going to reflect on you, like, how did you not know kind of thing. Now, there's sometimes there's things that happen that you just can't, you can't anticipate. But 90% of the time, things I see wrong in laundromats, you can anticipate. So let's get a quarter out and let's bend the machine and see what she does now. Let's see if she's quiet. Let's see if let's see if the one hit wonder here fix this thing. Now I got the lint tray out. Let's put the lint tray back, Gina. See, I don't remember everything. Look at that totally different. Now we got a working dryer again. That took me about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So I got one more I'm going to take a look at that's up there real quick and then I'm done for the night. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Man the little guy's running nice now. Nice and quiet. One thing about old dryers. Now these dryers are probably from 97, 95 that range. It's not the dryers aren't repairable it's just owners get tired of repairing them and if you don't get these parts powder coated or repainted every so often and you and then get new stickers decals put on they look really trashy you know like this washer this dryer's not it's not super new but it's not bad look at it. it's nice and clean 
Then you look at the overlay here. I mean, you can see where someone ripped this off. That looks trashy. You know, this tan color's faded. That's what does these in, and that's when people start to think you don't care about your laundromat. So those are things you can do cosmetically to dryers to make them nice. If they're working really good and they're clean, you can replace overlays, the stickers, paint the baseboards even. You can even spray them with some kind of Krylon. And it makes a huge difference because people like it when things look nice. Just an FYI. Hope you like the video. I hope you're doing well. Hope you, everything's going good for you. I uh, always appreciate all everybody that watches the videos. Uh, I love making these for you. 